Hello everyone and welcome to today's tutorial. I'm Susan from Tiara Lace Crochet and today I'd like to share with you how to crochet this slip stitch join. We'll be working around some mini granny squares. I have a tutorial already on my channel for these little squares and I'll leave a link in the description box below for those. I'll also leave an end card if you find that easier. Okay, so let's begin with today's tutorial. We're actually going to be just working four of these little mini squares together. First of all, we'll work the vertical join and then the horizontal. It's important to identify your stitch count on each side and so you can match up your sides evenly and look at where your corner stitches are too before you start. If you begin with a slip knot on your hook and also maybe go up a half hook size if your tension's quite tight as the slip stitch join does tend to work up quite tightly. I'm going to refer to these inside loops of the join on both sides of our squares and you'll find them just here the inside loops rather than front loops and back loops. So these are the ones that actually match up with each other. Those are the ones we're going to work into. Right, so we're going to start but first of all with our right hand square and find the corner stitch which is just here insert our hook and then pick up our left square keep the um, working yarn to the back and then find your corner stitch on your left square the inside loop again and then bring your yarn through and bring it through that right hand loop as well and through the loop on your hook this can seem a little bit fiddly to start, but just persevere. And there you've made your very first slip stitch join. Next, we're going to match up all these inside loops. So find the next loop on the right hand square, the next loop on your left hand square. Find your yarn at the back and pull through. And then pull through the loop on your hook. Now you will find your own way of working this which is easiest for you. So it does seem a little bit fiddly to start off with. Then you just continue up each side working in the corresponding loops. So continue all the way up to the next corner. This is how it's looking and it gives a nice little ridge here because you've missed that loop. We're almost at the corner now. There we go. So, through the right hand corner, the left hand corner, and again pulling through whichever way is easiest for you. And that's how it's looking. And then to join on the next corner. You just pick up your work as 
best you can insert through there and you need to pick up this as well I would probably suggest we try working flat so I can show you it's a little bit easier I'll just make sure that this is my corner one two three four five six seven eight nine I know there's nine stitches yeah that's my corner and then also through the front loop of that corner there are no rights and wrong ways to do this you just fiddle around to get the best tension for yourselves there we are and now we've got our yarn at the back so we need to insert our hook in the next chain that inside loop and then in this inside loop here and then we're ready to progress up the side again I think we're ready to pick it up now so yeah matching up these loops as we go oh see the yarn came forward now it has to be at the back I don't think this is the easiest join but once you do get into the rhythm of it it's well worth the effort but that's just for me I mean you might find it quite easy I find it a little well I've had to match up the chains and make sure I'm not stitches out and things like that but it's worth persevering and then we're at the top so of course you'd probably have far more squares but just for today's tutorial we'll just imagine you've done lots of squares and this is the top and now we'll just do a little yarn over and pull through so we will when we do the single crochet border we will do a little stitch in there in the chain and there to work a nice border so snip your yarn and then just give that a little tug there we are so that's our vertical join done I usually do all the vertical or the horizontals after. Right, next we're going to do exactly the same here. So go ahead and just do what you did here, here, and I'll meet you in a few seconds. So once again, I've got a slip knot on my hook. We're going to find this bottom inside corner insert our hook find the right hand inside corner I'll just check that that is correct yeah that's correct but we do need our yarn at the back of our work again we need to pull through and then once again pull through the loop on our hook to make our first slip stitch join next we're going to work our way up so joining again the opposite inside loops
again I have got my work at the back my yarn at the back if I just show you it's just here looped over my fingers there it is This yarn isn't the best one to demonstrate with. Never mind. So in there and then in there and then bring the yarn through. As you can see, I think I might be slightly out here somewhere. I might have missed a loop down here. Because uh, that will match up with that. Oh, no, no. I think we're right. Are we? Yes, we are. We're right. So, in there. And then in this one bringing the yarn through again and then into the corner and again into the corner bringing the yarn through and like so and then I just elongate this loop slightly work into the next corner into the next corner and again bring the yarn through and then just work your way up I think perhaps the most difficult thing is getting used to holding your yarn at the back of your work. And you just continue like so just as we did on the other side or the vertical and as you can see you have a lovely little join there if you find holding your yarn at the back a little bit difficult I'll just pull back and show you how else you can work or hold your yarn. So I've just pulled the yarn through back down to here. You can pull this back yarn up like this. So long as it's underneath here. And then you can always hold your yarn here to create some tension and go ahead with working your loops so you can actually see the yarn as I say we all have our different ways of working so it's whatever works best for you and I think for me the other way works better but I just wanted to show you that you can hold this yarn like this and work it. A different way. And 
And of course, then you will need to pull this yarn through here. And you can sometimes just see it peeping through at the back. And you just go ahead then and work up to the top. So I'm just going to go and work up to the top and then I'll show you how to do the border. So I've reworked up there and now we've got our stitches, our slip stitches completed. And once again, I'm just going to finish off by yarning over and pulling through. Snip the yarn, move your hook, and then pull down nicely. And then what you do, you'd weave these little ends in. But I'm just going to show you quickly how to do a very simple single crochet border. So you can have this little slip stitch sitting nicely at the edges of your work. So I've started with a slip knot on my hook. I'm going in, not into the corner, but into the next stitch along, into the back loop. And I'm just going to do a standing single crochet like so. And then we're going to just single crochet in the back loop across until we get to the join. So on these little squares between our corners, we do have seven stitches. And by going into the back loop, we're going to be mirroring this little ridge here that's prominent on our squares. So to make a nice even stitch across this join area here, go into that back loop of the corner stitch with a single crochet and then into your chain with a single crochet or your slip stitch join and then just to the other side of there do a slip stitch join and do a slip do a single crochet do apologize and then into the back loop of the next stitch across And there you'll have a lovely finished join here. So I do think that makes a big difference. Just knowing how to finish off your little slip, sti slip stitch joins um, where they meet the edge of your work. So you just continue round your work. I'll just single crochet to the next corner and meet you there. So I've just put one stitch in the corner, so I'll just put another two. So we end up with three single crochets, I should say, in the corner. And now we'll work single crochets down the side. There we go. So you've got your little single crochets going down the side. I'll now meet you here to show you once again how to do this little join. So I've actually gone round a bit further and this is the last join. So into that corner with a single crochet into your slip stitch join with a single crochet into the next corner and then single crochet in the back loops of each of the next square. So I'll meet you in a second and show you how to fasten off. So this is the last corner so we need three single crochets. I've already done one, two, three, 
two and three. Don't know where that random piece of threads come from. Okay, and next, don't yarn over and pull through. I'll just show you quickly how to do the invisible join. Snip your yarn, pull through. So that's how it's just looking at the moment. Then I just thread a needle. And now we're going to skip over this first stitch and go under both loops from front to back of the next stitch and just make. I'll just see if you can see a little clearer. So this is the loop here that we're making. So it's just come from here through there underneath that second stitch along, pinch your work and then go back into that stitch where you started and just secure that so you've got what looks like little stitches going along there and you could just bring your yarn through, keep pinching so you don't lose that little stitch and then perhaps just thread through to the back, flip over and then just weave in and there you'll have a lovely invisible join. So I think you may agree that this gives a really nice effect to your slip stitch join and I found it quite difficult in the past to get this looking half decent but there you go. So the slip stitch join also allows you to get lovely definition or lovely edging on your little squares. So I can't thank you enough for watching once again and I hope you've enjoyed and in the meantime I really look forward to seeing you on the next video. So if you've got any comments I'd love to hear and I'll just see you soon. And in the meantime, take care.